Hi guys, Erin here from the Wild Side Crew, and I am here aboard the Island Spirit, one of our whale watching and snorkeling vessels, to kickstart our Wild Side Wednesday. So since we can't be out on the water with you all right now, answering your questions face to face, we've decided to do a weekly video, each video on a different topic, answering questions submitted by you guys. And uh, I'm going to start us off with my personal favorite topic, and that is humpback whales. So humpback whales are a type of baleen whale that we see here in the Hawaiian Islands during the winter time. So anywhere uh, between October and late May, you have the opportunity to see these amazing animals around our islands. These animals are mostly coming down from Alaska, uh, maybe Russia, British Columbia. Uh, we're watching the North Pacific, part of the North Pacific population. Uh, they're feeding in those northern polar waters during the summertime, and then they'll make one of the longest mammal migrations towards the equator uh, during the wintertime to have their calves. You might be wondering how we know where they're moving and things like that, and that is a really good question. Um, one of the ways we can identify these whales is by using photo identification, getting a picture of the bottom of their tail. So the bottom of each humpback whale tail is unique to that individual. Uh, so that's how we can identify them. And scientists have, ca have catalogs all around the world of different populations um, using this photo identification method. So what we do while we're out on the water during humpback whale season is we get those pictures of the underside of the tail and we submit it to a website called happywhale.com. This is a citizen science project that you can participate in as well as long as you have a picture of a whale tail. Um, you don't have to be a scientist or researcher or have a degree or anything like that. If you get a nice photo of the underside of a tail, then you can submit that to happywhale.com. See if it's been sighted before. Maybe that whale has a name. Maybe it just had a calf. So that's one really fun thing that we do during whale season and that you could participate in as well. So humpback whales are also part of a group of whales called Rorqual whales. And this group includes whales like the humpbacks, blue whales, fin whales, say whales. And what all of these whales have in common are these lines on their underside that go from their chin all the way down to... Um, about their belly button. And what these lines are called are ventral pleats and they will use uh, this part of their anatomy during feeding. So those ventral pleats will expand out like an accordion uh, so they can, they can take in thousands and thousands of gallons of water and fish. And they really expand their mouth to take in all of that prey. And that's when they'll use their baleen to strain out all of that seawater and keep the food inside. When I say baleen, what I'm talking about is that instead of teeth, like their very close relatives the dolphin would have, you can see this spotted dolphin here has uh, teeth kind of like we do in the upper and lower jaws of their mouth. And these guys will use all of these teeth. They can have anywhere from 70 to up to 104, 105 teeth in their mouth. Um, and what they'll do with them is catch one prey at a time and swallow it whole. Now these animals, um, they don't lose their teeth, their baby teeth, and get new ones like we do. They have one set of teeth for their entire life. Uh, but when we're talking about baleen whales, what we're talking about are these whales with uh, these really long, large plates of baleen instead of those teeth. So I do have a piece of baleen here. It's made out of keratin, so the same thing as our fingernails. And this piece is probably anywhere from four to five feet long. It's the entire length of it. And uh, baleen whales will have hundreds of these plates hanging from their upper jaw, kind of like this. You can kind of see that here, right in the upper jaw, so they don't have them in the lower jaw. And what they'll do is they'll use this baleen to basically as a strainer, to strain out water from their giant mouths and to keep all the krill uh, or fish or whatever prey um, that they're eating inside. So adult humpback whales can eat uh, upwards of 2,000 pounds of fish per day. They've been found feeding on things like krill, sand lance, mackerel, capelin, uh, just kind of small schooling bait fish. 
Now these animals aren't really feeding while they're down in their birthing grounds. Uh, we simply just don't have the prey availability here for them for it to be energetically efficient to try and feed. Our waters are a lot warmer here, less nutrient dense. That's what makes them so perfect for our coral reefs, uh, but not for humpback whales to be feeding while they're down here. But there is one exception to that, and that is baby whales. These animals are mammals just like we are, so they're warm-blooded, they have hair, they give live birth, and they also nurse their calves. So these calves are nursing on milk that's about 40-45% fat, so more like the consistency of cottage cheese or yogurt, and they can drink up to 100 gallons of this milk per day. So these animals are gaining weight at a very rapid rate. Uh, they are doubling in size when they're heading back up to Alaska to feed, and this might just be about two weeks after they're born. So another th uh, really cool thing that we get to do down here in the birthing grounds is listen to whale songs. So what we do on every trip that we're out on during whale, whale season is stick our hydrophone in the water, and it acts as like an underwater microphone. So what this whale song is, it's honestly still kind of a mystery to us. We don't exactly know what role it's playing for these whales, but we do have some ideas that it has to do with breeding. We really only hear the whale song at the breeding grounds during those winter months. And we think it's the male singing that, that song, and each population actually has their own song. And all the individuals in that one population will sing the same song, and it just kind of evolves and changes over time. Uh, but you can recognize it uh, from year to year, and you can hear uh, those little tweaks and changes that they've done from the previous season. So, again, we don't exactly know what the whale song is for, but we really think it has something to do with breeding. Uh, this whale song has been really important in humpback whale conservation. Roger Payne first recorded it in the 70s and uh, it caused a lot of people to jump on the Save the Whale movement. So these animals uh, were kind of really saved by their own song. So we wanted to show you guys a little clip of this whale song. Alright, now we're going to get started with those awesome questions that you guys submitted. We're going to start with Skylar from Ohio, and what Skylar wants to know is, how big are humpback whale throats? And that is a really good question. These animals can be anywhere from 45, 50, 55 feet long. They have tongues the size of a Volkswagen Beetle, and they can eat anywhere from a ton to a ton and a half of food per day. So everything about them is pretty big, right? And when people come out on the boat, a lot of the times they do ask, have um, humpback whales ever eaten a human? Can they eat a human? And the answer is no. Uh, their throats are only about the size of a grapefruit. Our next question is from River over on Maui, and what River wants to know is why do these animals jump out of the water? Uh, so when these animals are doing that jumping behavior, uh, you might hear us call that a breach, and long story short, we don't have a positive answer for that question. Uh, we have a lot of awesome theories as to why they might be doing it, but we can't exactly ask whales why they're doing what they do. Uh, so communication is a really big theory. Sound does travel farther and faster in water, so those really large bodies slapping the surface of the water might be sending a signal to another whale somewhere. Uh, another idea is that it could be for hygiene. Um, 
any individual whale at one point can have up to 100 pounds of barnacles on its skin. So maybe it's trying to dislodge some of those barnacles. Kind of like scratching an itch or something. And then maybe it's even exercise for calves. There have been studies done uh, that show an increased level of myoglobin in calves after bouts of breaching. And what myoglobin is are those oxygen binding cells in their muscles that helps them dive deeper and longer than we ever could. So communication, hygiene, and exercise are what we think the breaching or jumping is for. Next question is from Colden uh, up in Massachusetts, and Colden wants to know what are those bumpy things on its head? And another really good question, um, these knobs or bumps on the head are uh, actually unique and specific to humpback whales. Uh, so I really like talking about these structures when we're out on our trips because they are special to this species. One thing that makes humpback whales so unique uh, from other whales. What these bumps are called um, are tubercles. And out of each tubercle is a single stiff hair. Uh, and we think that hair might act like uh, cat's whiskers, so maybe like a sensory structure maybe to increase uh, surface area for thermal regulation as well, um, kind of adjusting it, their body temperature. They also have these tubercles on the leading edge or the front edge of their pectoral flipper. And uh, we think those could be to increase lift and reduce drag to make it more efficient to swim in the water, make them more hydrodynamic. Our next question comes from Kenzie right here on Oahu. Uh, Kenzie wants to know what are the threats of humpback whales? And that is a really good question because uh, whales and marine life in general, they're facing a different set of threats today than they were 40, 50 years ago. So a lot of people think whaling is still the number one threat to whales, um, but it's actually a little bit different these days, especially for our humpback whales. They are an amazing conservation success story um, since whaling ended in the 80s. Um, but they are facing some different threats today. So now uh, humpback whales are more vulnerable to things like ship strikes, entanglement in, in fishing gear, and also plastic pollution. So if you want to do your part to help humpback whales, um, eat local, know where your food is coming from, and also try and reduce your single-use plastic like bags and water bottles. You guys can check us out on Instagram at Wildside High. That's Wildside H-I or Facebook at Wildside Specialty Tours for more uh, fun facts and ocean-related activities. And from everyone here, the Wildside crew, stay safe, and thanks so much for tuning in.